Once upon a time, in a small town nestled deep in the forest, there was a legend of monsters that roamed the woods. They were said to be hideous creatures with razor-sharp claws and teeth, glowing eyes, and a thirst for human flesh. Despite the warnings of the elders, a group of foolish teenagers decided to venture into the forest one night, seeking adventure and thrills. They laughed and joked as they walked deeper into the woods, oblivious to the danger lurking in the shadows. Suddenly, they heard a rustling in the bushes, and a monstrous figure emerged. It was at least seven feet tall, with twisted horns protruding from its head and long, sinewy arms that ended in clawed hands. Its eyes glowed with a malevolent light as it lunged towards them, roaring with fury. The teenagers scattered, screaming and crying as they tried to escape the creature's wrath. But it was no use, the monster was too fast, too strong, and too relentless. One by one, it picked them off, tearing them limb from limb and feasting on their flesh. As the sun began to rise, the creature retreated back into the forest, leaving only a trail of blood and carnage in its wake. The few survivors stumbled back to town, trembling and traumatized, forever scarred by the horrors they had witnessed. From that day on, the legend of the monsters in the woods became all too real for the townspeople. They warned their children never to venture into the forest at night, lest they too fall prey to the monsters that lurk within. And the memory of those hapless teenagers, torn apart by the beasts, haunted the town for generations to come. Years passed, and the legend of the monsters in the woods slowly faded from memory. The town grew larger and more prosperous, and the people went about their daily lives without fear of the creatures that once haunted their nightmares. But one day, a group of hikers stumbled upon a hidden cave deep in the forest. It was filled with strange symbols and markings, and at the center of the cave lay a mysterious, glowing crystal. Unbeknownst to the hikers, the crystal was a powerful artifact that had been used by an ancient civilization to summon and control the monsters of the forest. And now, with the crystal disturbed from its resting place, the monsters were free once again. At first, the townspeople didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. But as the sun began to set, and the shadows grew longer, strange noises could be heard coming from the forest. The townspeople huddled in their homes, locking their doors and windows, as the monsters began to emerge from the woods. They were more ferocious and more numerous than ever before, and they showed no mercy to anyone who crossed their path. The streets were filled with the sounds of screams and growls, as the creatures roamed through the town, tearing down buildings and slaughtering anyone who dared to stand in their way. The few survivors who managed to escape the town told tales of unimaginable horror. They spoke of monsters with glowing eyes, razor-sharp claws, and an insatiable hunger for human flesh. They spoke of the town being reduced to rubble and ash, its once proud buildings now nothing more than twisted, smoking ruins. In the end, the monsters returned to the forest, taking the crystal with them. The town was left in ruins, its streets stained with blood and its people dead or scattered to the winds. And as the sun rose over the smoldering wreckage, the townspeople realized with a sense of dread that the monsters would always be there, waiting in the shadows, ready to strike again. The survivors who had managed to escape the destruction of the town wandered through the forest, seeking shelter and safety. But they soon realized that the monsters were everywhere, lurking in the shadows, waiting to pounce. They formed small groups, banding together for protection and support. They scavenged for food and supplies, trying to eke out a living in a world that had been turned upside down by the monster's rampage. But it wasn't long before they realized that they weren't alone in the forest. Other survivors had also managed to escape the town, and they too were struggling to survive in the face of the monster's wrath. Together, they formed a community, building makeshift shelters and fortifications to protect themselves from the monsters that roamed the woods. They worked together, pooling their resources and skills to create a semblance of order in the chaos. But even with their combined strength, they knew that they were always just one misstep away from being torn apart by the monsters. And so they lived in constant fear, always looking over their shoulders, always listening for the telltale growls and snarls of the creatures that haunted their every waking moment. Years passed, and the survivors grew old and weary. They had managed to create a semblance of a life for themselves, but they knew that they would never truly be safe from the monsters that still lurked in the forest. And so they passed their knowledge down to the next generation, warning them of the dangers that lay beyond the safety of their fortified walls. They told them tales of the monsters that had destroyed their town, and of the bravery and sacrifice of those who had managed to survive. And the children listened, wide-eyed and fearful, knowing that the monsters were still out there, waiting in the shadows, ready to strike at any moment. For they had learned the most important lesson of all, that in a world filled with monsters, there was no such thing as safety or security, only the constant struggle for survival. But as the years went by, the community of survivors began to grow stronger and more resilient. They learned to adapt to the dangers of the forest, 
devising new strategies and weapons to fight back against the monsters. They discovered hidden caches of weapons and ammunition, and even managed to scavenge some of the old technology left behind by the civilization that had once controlled the monsters. Slowly but surely, they began to push back against the creatures that had once held them in thrall. They formed hunting parties, stalking the monsters through the forest and taking them down with a combination of cunning and brute force. And with each monster that fell, the survivors grew stronger, more confident, more determined to take back their world from the creatures that had stolen it from them. Years turned into decades, and the community of survivors grew and flourished. They rebuilt their town, fortified their walls, and created a thriving society in the midst of the wilderness. And while the monsters still lurked in the shadows, waiting to strike, the survivors knew that they had the strength and the will to fight back. For they had learned that in a world filled with monsters, the only true power was the power of the human spirit, the indomitable will to survive and thrive, no matter what horrors lay beyond the walls. But as the community of survivors grew stronger, they also grew more ambitious. They began to venture further and further into the forest, seeking out new resources and territories to conquer. And as they did so, they began to encroach on the monsters' territory, destroying their habitats and hunting their prey. The creatures, already weakened by years of warfare and hardship, found themselves pushed to the brink of extinction. But the survivors did not care. They were consumed by their own greed and ambition, blinded to the consequences of their actions. They saw only the spoils of victory, and were willing to do whatever it took to claim them. And so it was that the monsters, facing annihilation at the hands of the humans, turned to a desperate measure. They banded together, forming an alliance that transcended their individual species, and made a pact with the darkness itself. They summoned forth a being of unspeakable power, a creature of pure malice and malevolence, that had lain dormant for eons, waiting for a chance to break free of its chains. And when it emerged from its prison in the depths of the underworld, it brought with it a new horror, a terror beyond imagining. It was a monster unlike any other, a being that existed beyond the boundaries of space and time, a creature that could destroy entire worlds with a single thought. And it was angry. The survivors watched in horror as the new monster descended upon them, its wrath burning with an otherworldly intensity. It tore through their defenses like they were nothing, rending steel and stone apart with ease. The survivors fought back with all their might, but they were no match for the monster's unfathomable power. One by one, they fell, their bodies ripped apart by the monster's tendrils of darkness. The forest burned with an eerie green flame as the monster consumed everything in its path. The survivors who managed to escape fled back to their fortified town, barricading themselves behind their walls and praying for deliverance. But it was too late. The monster had already breached their defenses, its tendrils of darkness reaching out to grab anything that moved. The survivors fought back with all their might, but it was no use. The monster was too powerful, too malevolent, too consumed by its own hatred to be stopped. And so it consumed them all, tearing them apart and absorbing their life force into its own monstrous form. The town was reduced to a smoking ruin, the last vestiges of humanity snuffed out in an instant. And as the monster feasted on the remnants of the survivors, it cackled with glee, knowing that it had finally triumphed over its ancient enemies. The forest was now its domain, a kingdom of darkness and horror that would never be challenged again. But the monster's victory was short-lived, for it soon realized that it had consumed something far more powerful than it had anticipated, the very essence of human spirit that had allowed the survivors to endure against all odds. As the monster absorbed the last remnants of the survivors, it felt a strange sensation deep within its being, something that it had never experienced before. It was a feeling of hope, of courage, of resilience, of compassion, and of love. The monster recoiled in horror, for it knew that these were the very emotions that it had sought to extinguish. But now, they were a part of its being, and it could not escape them. As the monster tried to resist the surge of emotions, it began to change. Its form twisted and contorted, its tendrils of darkness retracting into its body, as a blinding light emerged from within. The forest shook as the monster underwent a metamorphosis, its monstrous form giving way to a being of pure light and energy. And as the light expanded, the forest was reborn, the darkness receding and giving way to a new dawn. The monster had been transformed into something new, something that embodied the very spirit of humanity, a being of compassion, courage, and love. It had become a protector, a guardian, and a friend to all those who lived within the forest. And so it was that the forest was reborn, its creatures and inhabitants living in harmony with the transformed monster. It had become a symbol of hope, a beacon of light in a world filled with darkness and horror. And as the years passed, the forest flourished, its inhabitants thriving under the watchful eye of the transformed monster. 
For in a world filled with monsters, it was the power of the human spirit that had ultimately triumphed, bringing light to even the darkest of places. However, as the transformed monster continued to watch over the forest, it began to notice a disturbing trend. The inhabitants of the forest, emboldened by the peace and safety that the transformed monster provided, began to venture further and further outside the forest, encroaching on human settlements and causing chaos and destruction. The transformed monster knew that it could not allow this to continue. And so it made a decision, a decision that would change everything. It left the forest, venturing out into the world of humans, determined to teach them the value of compassion, courage, and love, just as it had learned from the survivors of the forest. The transformed monster journeyed across the land, battling against monsters and human alike, bringing peace wherever it went. And as it did so, it inspired others to follow in its footsteps, to stand up against the darkness and to fight for what was right. And so, the transformed monster became a legend, a symbol of hope and inspiration to all those who knew of it. It had transcended its origins as a creature of darkness, becoming something greater, something more. And in the end, it proved that even the most monstrous of beings can find redemption, if only they are willing to embrace the power of the human spirit.